I've made it no secret that my preference when it comes to apps has for the most part been Uber Eats, but y'all have been hammering around in the comments that I should give DoorDash a try. So I decided to go ahead and give it a try and I drove for the whole weekend because they baited me with a $75 bonus if I did 25 deliveries. So did I get this bonus or did I not get it? What are the conditions of the bonus in the first place? And more importantly, would I recommend being a DoorDash driver to make some extra money or even full time? Let's get into it. What's up everyone? This is Elijah with Financial Anatomy, coming at you with another video that's gonna empower you to take control of your financial destiny. On this channel, we talk about side hustles, personal finance, ways to make money online, and investing. And we're gonna be talking about a very common side hustle in this video in the form of being a DoorDash driver. For you new viewers out there who don't have any background on me, I'm not just some random guy on the internet who's only driven for a weekend and is giving his share or view on it. I'm also not someone who's never done it before because I have a whole nother channel called the App Lifestyle where I focus on the gig economy and doing delivery apps and rideshare apps. So I'm not just some random guy on YouTube just talking about, oh, well, I heard about this or that. I'm actually in the game. So I'm wearing two caps in this video. The first cap is I'm just that genuinely curious person who's done DoorDash in the past, but they baited me with this challenge, so I wanna see what they have to offer. But I also have the other hat of having over 4,000 trips as a Uber Eats driver under my belt. So I'm a pretty experienced app delivery driver, and I'm gonna be pretty critical on what they have to offer from that perspective. So if you find any of that appealing, then you might just wanna consider subscribing. Well, before you discuss that, I do have to mention, since we're talking about earnings in any form here, I do need to mention the financial anatomy budgeting template. See, a lot of people in the gig economy find themselves in a quagmire. So they just keep working hard for money, they pay off some bills, and then they just right back at it. If you really want your money to start working for you, you need to make sure it's going in certain places. And the budgeting template will show you where you stand financially and what areas you need to make improvements in. All you gotta do is just plug in your income. You can get it for free by clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comment. But with that being said, it feels a little weird talking about the gig economy in my standard set. So how do you feel about us changing scenery? Okay, that's much better. Honestly, I really was debating on which channel I should put this on, Financial Anatomy or the App Lifestyle, but since I'm gonna do quite a bit of math in this video, it belongs here. And I've already made a video about is Uber driving worth it? Is Uber Eats worth it? So I might as well continue the series here. But a lot of what I said in my Uber Eats video is gonna stand here as far as reasons to get out there and do DoorDash. So if you want references for that, go check that video out. We're gonna be talking about how much I made and the math of if I broke even, profit, etc. Now, sadly, I have footage to pull off of that phone. So you're gonna have to put up with getting filmed with my old phone. Don't worry, it's not that bad. So jumping right into it, gonna open the DoorDash app, gonna look at the earnings, and we're going to last week. So I made a total of $216.45. I actually got a $2 cash tip, so we're gonna add that. That means I got, I made $218.45. I drove on Sunday and I drove on Saturday. I didn't uh, do anything on Friday. I also didn't do it around lunchtime on Sunday because I had to get some professional uh, photographs taken. So I did not do any lunch rush on Sunday. And this is the it's the equivalent to a quest on Uber Eats, but I'm, I'm just gonna say promo for DoorDash, but this is the challenge that they sent me. So we now know how much I made overall on the weekend, but that's actually not including that promotion because I didn't actually qualify for it. You might be wondering, how in the world does that work? Well, we're gonna get into that towards the end of the video, but we're gonna keep doing the math so we can keep it moving. So we're gonna go to my Stride app because we gotta remember that all this income is taxable. So we have to include that. Now me, I use a standard tax rate of 30%. Obviously at the end of the year, I might owe more than that, I might owe less. Usually it's less, but I use 30% as a uh, average. So I put 30% of whatever I make away for taxes. So what is 30% of what I made? So 218.45 times 0 0.30, that gives us uh, $65.53 to put away for taxes. 
Keep that number in mind for later. So I'm gonna go to my Stride app, which I use to track my mileage. Now the standard mileage uh, deduction that I'm gonna be using here can be looked up on the IRS website, but it's usually between 58 or 57 cents per mile that you're working that you can deduct. Now I have the actual amount on the screen because I'm not gonna look it up in this video, but Stride actually calculates all that information for us. So we're gonna go to taxes, or not taxes, but my mileage that I drove yesterday. And let's start with Saturday. So on Saturday, I drove a little over 49 miles. On Sunday, well, we're not finished with Saturday. On Saturday evening, rather, I drove around 55 miles. And on Sunday, I drove a total of a little over 52 miles. So we're gonna take all of that and add it up because it's already calculated the uh, deduction for me. 62 plus 30, 84 plus 29, 49. That gives me $87.95 as far as a tax deduction that can be utilized. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that amount and we're gonna subtract it from the total estimated taxes that I put aside. So what that looks like, 65.53 minus 87.95. And that actually gives me $22.42 as far as what the government would actually owe me in this situation. Now, obviously this isn't my only income. I have other income streams that y'all seen on the channel. But what I'm saying is this particular income that came from DoorDash in this instance, not only is this income not taxed based on that deduction, but this gives me a rollover in terms of deductions that I can use in my other endeavors to offset that taxes from a deduction standpoint. But we're not finished yet. Y'all probably wanna know exactly how much that I make per hour, right? So we're gonna do the math on that real quick. So total was 218.45. And it says I was online, you know, 12 hours and blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna round that up to 13, keep things simple. So divide it by 13, that comes out to be uh, a little, well not a little over, almost $17 an hour, but uh, $16.80 if you wanna be exact. That's what it comes out to be in terms of an hourly basis. Now let's cover that promo that I didn't qualify for because you probably wanna know the details on that. So the details of that challenge that you saw earlier was that I need to do 25 deliveries and I would receive $75. So doing the math, that's an extra $3 on top of anything else I'd be making from DoorDash from that particular promotion. You might be wondering uh, why would they be doing these double or triple promotions? Well, a big reason is DoorDash has just recently had their IPO and apparently a huge portion of that budget is going towards driver acquisition and also bonuses to get current drivers back on the road because some people just kind of took a long hiatus because of this whole pandemic thing but obviously the food delivery demand did not decrease in fact it increased so they're trying to get ahead of the curve because they really need drivers right now and there's other evidence to support this if you just type in doordash the first thing that pops up is their ads and it's pretty damn expensive to advertise on google take it from someone who's actually done it before pretty pricey and the fact that they're offering $250 like just to invite people to get them on the platform obviously that's in my area but other areas have higher lower but the point is they're putting a lot of money just to get people on the platform and that says a lot too so I was doing my trips like normal and that's the screenshot that you see on the screen right now I did about 15 deliveries and things are going smoothly but as I told you before I had an appointment with a photographer to shoot some professional photos on Sunday so I had to go to Dallas get those photos taken. And then I decided to uh, hang around the Oak Cliff area to do the uh, promotions because it was just uh, sizzling out there. So I did about 10 deliveries and um, obviously I hit the amount, but the promotion just uh, vanished. I was wondering like, hold on, what kind of sick game are they playing? I told myself, you know what, when I get home, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. So I started driving back home. And one thing I noticed on the app is as soon as I got back in my territory, the promotion reappeared and it reappears saying that I've done 15 deliveries. So I looked at it a little closer and apparently where I did the last 10 deliveries, 
it wasn't in the eligible areas. Now you might be wondering uh, why am I telling you this? Well, because I don't want you to make the same mistake I made. I want you to read the details so you can figure out exactly if the promo is gonna be active in your area, what areas it's active in, and what areas it's not active in. Now, truth be told, they didn't do the best job at letting this information be known inside the app. So I would say that's actually a pretty big problem. I wasn't that upset because I actually did make some decent money even without the promotion. And as y'all who watch the app lifestyle, y'all know the range I like to stay in is between 11 and $17 an hour. If it's higher than 17, then by, by all means. But if I'm in that range, I'm genuinely uh, fine. I'm happy. So it was kind of like a bummer that I didn't get the quest, but I would caution DoorDash against doing such uh, little shady maneuvers. The challenge email I received mentioned that these challenges are in the beta phase, so I'll give them a small pass. But I'm gonna be honest, if y'all don't work out the kinks of this type of promotion, then people are gonna be pretty pissed off if they put in the work only to realize that they did part of the trips in the wrong area. And you're playing a pretty slippery slope because drivers don't take lightly to that anyway. It doesn't even really work for Uber Eats, which is the model y'all are trying to mimic because Uber Eats has been doing this whole quest thing for a while. In a lot of cases, you just need to get the quest done. It doesn't matter where, as long as it's in your Metroplex. They've tried the little areas of pocket activity where you gotta do quests in. It's not working too good for them. So if you're gonna copy them, you need to copy them completely and just have quests be done in the Metroplex because if people make the same mistake I did, which they will because y'all don't make it known y'all just list all the areas in the big list and it's easy for someone to miss it they're going to be pretty pissed off and they're going to start driving for your competitors and they're not going to do what you want which is to be exclusive to your platform that's the whole point of you throwing these promotions and throwing money at it you want people to just stay on your platform and not drive for other platforms if you keep baiting drivers like that with these little shady maneuvers they're going to start driving for their competitors and that would not be good for you especially considering how many competitors you have nowadays. So to conclude, do I think DoorDash is worth it in 2021 and going forward? Well, based on what I told you, since they just IPO, they have a lot of money to spend, a lot of investors to impress. So I imagine these promotions are gonna be going on for a while. I didn't bring this up, but they also have boosts going on in the various areas that you can see on the map. That was actually a pretty normal thing. So I was getting those uh, promo boosts. Like when I say boost, I mean, Per delivery, it's an extra dollar, two dollars, three dollars. That's what I mean by boost. I'm using Uber East territory uh, terminology because I'm used to it, but that's what I mean by uh, boost. So I would say actually it is worth it to go ahead and cash in because I don't think they're gonna have these bonuses around for like a long period of time. I think it'll probably last for the rest of most of the year, but then things are gonna start to normalize again. So you might as well cash out while you can. However, I don't ever recommend doing this stuff uh, full time for too long. Use it to step yourself up, build a skill set, get another job if you have to do it full time, but don't like have a plan to stay doing this full time. Have an exit plan. And as always, I say it's a great side hustle to do it part time. So if you're interested in DoorDash, you can sign up using the link in the description below or in the uh, pinned comment. Depending on what's going on, they may actually have a bonus for you too. So it couldn't hurt to check it out and see what they have to offer. But that does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit that bell notification. If you want to be notified when I drop more financial anatomy videos that will empower you to take control of your financial destiny. Until the next video, be safe, be profitable everyone.